It's weird to have to admit that faith plays an enormous role in the distribution of information. Most cannot take the time to spend hours finding papers, hours more reading them, across multiple disciplines, and if they did, where's the time to learn the background, the terminology, the math? And so as it has been put to me many times, how do you know where to put your faith in the sort of topics we discuss when you have a 100% legitimate reason to have to go on faith? For many of you, there has to be a reason to choose one paradigm over another, to take one person's analysis over another's. My favorite way to do this is through prediction of events and through the prediction of direction of scientific fields. This is where one must survey the facts and arrive at but one inevitable conclusion. This video will first quickly go over what has happened up to about the start of 2020, and then we will go over the latest set of predictions as they are being fulfilled by the day, and I'll ask you to draw that aforementioned conclusion at the end. So for the majority of the last decade, these were the pillars of the observers. The underlying foundation was dark matter and its folly. In 2011, we cited against WIMP dark matter and later axions, instead favoring the position that we have not yet discovered all the dust and plasma. We saw the correlations published on the sun and earthquakes and were not at all shy about our pursuit of the ultimate answer. The sun's effect on weather and climate was perhaps our strongest push from the gate especially in the insistence of current model failures and the absence of appropriate solar particle forcing and cosmic rays. Lastly, we sided with a very small group of scientists who were seeing pre-earthquake electromagnetic signals when the rest of the majority of the world said it was spurious and grasping at fantasy. We'll begin with dark matter. Wimps are all but dead. The majority of the field has now moved on and is examining forms of dark matter with electromagnetic interactions which violates the premise of dark matter, but when you can repeatedly get billions in funding with nothing but goose eggs to show for it, you can probably get away with this too. Nevertheless, the bet was against those billions and the world's best physicists, and so far, the dark matter milk carton remains a going concern. One to nothing. Up next, it's the sun and earthquakes. It may have taken us two years to find it, and two more to get it published, but the pursuit to find the ultimate answer to the sun and earthquakes came with the identification of the solar polar fields being tied to the biggest earthquakes. It's been cited by numerous professors and other NASA scientists, and the field has taken off as you can see here from a relevant page of our recent textbook. Feel free to pause and read it. There have been even more since that publication. The score is two to zero. Moving on to the sun and the weather. One of the days I'll remember the rest of my life is the day that I learned Ferris Wald had won the National Science Championship for a study on the solar control of tropical cyclones. The young observer I know well would advance into the semifinals of the World Science Championship. The rest is cake if you read the peer-reviewed literature. The models fail against paleoclimate scenarios, revealing their oversensitivity and bias to CO2. Those models are what are cited in any new paper claiming global warming fears. Those papers also use models that rely only on solar irradiance, choosing to ignore the now four-year-old particle forcing data sets. The papers on how the sun works the climate in short-term weather continue to come out, and 500 of them are organized in our textbook, which has been purchased by dozens of professors and scientists at NASA, NOAA, and the National Weather Service. It's used in a number of college classes, at which I've guest spoken various times. Three to nothing. Finally, earthquake prediction. Forgetting the fact that we regularly predict earthquakes and have published steps that allow anyone else to do so, there is now a mainstream textbook on the subject of electromagnetic precursors and a dedicated satellite looking for those electric signals, those signals that were crazy fantasies just years earlier. Clean sweep, four to zero. And that's across cosmology, astrophysics, climatology, seismology, and other geophysics fields. It's against the world's best, the prevailing paradigms, and their billions in funding. It's not really that difficult to know where to look for breakthroughs in science. Sometimes you have to wander. Always, you must retain your guide rope. We have longer exposés of the observer's resume, but if you can understand the odds against our version of the future coming true, maybe you'd like to see where we're going from here. Those four correct predictions are something, but also hundreds of thousands have predicted that when they woke up the next day, the observer's morning show would be there, and you've been right. It's been more than a clean sweep of the 2011 predictions. It's been something reliable as the sun, never taking a day off, 
and that's as important as anything, except maybe having Billy in the lab backing it up with plasma proof. And having that genius is an unfair advantage. Those billions could never buy them. And in addition to creating the Taurus jet model around a sphere magnet and proving electric weather, twice, and successful hydrogen fuel cell in visualizing electroquake activity, he's shown what can happen to the ground when Earth is exposed to the true energy from space. This energy has been taking on the entire solar system, changing all the planets in ways that either directly relate to a changing magnetic field, or that we have seen on Earth be controlled by electromagnetic aspects of the geosystem implying the same on those other planets. We saw accelerations of the Earth's magnetic field and predicted more, as well as more changes on the other planets, but let's begin with the prediction I didn't even know I had made. For those who have our new book, this was the very helpful and still very shy member of the Harvard Center for Astrophysics who said that if my galactic current sheet theory triggering the Sun and entire solar system was correct, then it would predict that we should see outbursts from the last few decades at the closest stars in the direction of the galactic center, the source of that current sheet. This was when we found that the only two close enough to really be studied within that time frame indeed had record outbursts. The further Barnard star was thought to be non-flaring until it roared to life about 20 years ago, and the same happened about a decade later at Proxima, except that known flaring star had its first recorded super flare ten times bigger than any previous one seen. Recently, a star in line with the Sun but smaller and weaker, AD Leo, had similar outbursting, and we'd expect it to go right before we do. I guess that's five to zero, but it was just months later that those continued changes on the other planets occurred. Pluto lost a fifth of its atmosphere in just over a year. That's not a freeze-out, that's a complete collapse of the system. Neptune had a storm go the wrong way, which implies its system has reversed as well. Imagine hurricane patterns on Earth reversing. Yeah, Pluto and Neptune make that six to zero. It was just in the last few months we learned of the accelerations of Earth's magnetic field loss in 2015 and 2017. And although we didn't get new percentage marks or new rates of decline relative to the previous baseline, that is exactly, again, what was predicted. Seven to nothing. Other aspects are more subtle. It was the 2019 conference when we said that the recurrent Nova paradigm was in need of steroids and an air pump. Similar arguments can be made in the recent expansion of mechanisms published in recurrent Nova science, the repeated confirmation of the seriousness of these cyclical events on Earth, and the record fast Earth rotation speed, predicted as part of the cycle, happening, and will continue. The Earth's field will continue to weaken and more accelerations will come. This is the cyclical disaster of Earth, described across the world and time, in story and in rock and bone. The other planets will continue to deepen their drift from normality alongside the Earth. Some things are uncertain, but the best bet is that we do have at least a decade to maybe 20 years before the next age of Earth begins. By then, we'll have stopped keeping score. Nobody will blame your seeking out comfort in those billions of dollars and high-profile scientists and the many detractors you can find of pretty much anyone saying anything. It is the internet, after all. But I recommend that you give the uncomfortable a chance, because what's at stake now is not just a fun little game of what will the data show and what will the journal say. The stakes are much higher. I will applaud your bravery to ignore the score we'll soon forget, and I'll wish you all the luck you're going to need to deal with that decision. I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.